Close the curtains, will you? Thank you. The island of Ibiza, a Spanish province in the Mediterranean about 50 miles southwest of Majorca. Ibiza is not only a mecca for tourists, it's also the center for hallucinatory drugs. For some time now, narcotics have been finding their way into British army bases, both here and abroad. These drugs are of high quality and remarkably cheap, which seems to rule out an underworld operation. Any other alternative suggests itself? Moscow. Of course, the Russians trying to undermine morale and efficiency. That, however, is not our problem. Our problem is that we have positive proof from an agent in Ibiza that the Russians, using unsuspecting hippies as guinea pigs, have perfected a new truth drug to use on enemy agents. A drug which, when used, leaves the victim totally unaware that he's been given it or any information he may have divulged while under its influence. We are desperate to get our hands on this drug. So desperate, we are prepared to sacrifice a member of the services. A man will be sent to Ibiza on the pretext of locating a missing agent, which is in fact true, and the Russians will be informed. When they're informed, the Russians will do one of two things. Either dispose of him immediately, or they'll take him prisoner, in which case we shall move in and get the drug. If you're looking for a volunteer, sir, Thank you, Wellington. The man I sent to Ibiza must have a romantic view of the world of espionage. Moreover, he must be a man who, when placed under the influence of the drug, will have absolutely no information to impart. In other words, a complete dummy. Appleton Porter, sir. Appleton Porter. to see you, Porter. Dummy. Come in. You wanted to see me, sir? Yes. Come in, Porter. Yes, sir? You're looking a trifle thinner than when I saw you last. Uh, it's the camouflage, sir. It makes you blend into the surroundings. I understand. Sit down. Yes, sir. I asked to see you because I've got an assignment for you in the field. The field, sir? Your name, until further notice, is Arnold Barker. I have here your passport and documents relating to your cover. But first, I'd like to paint the picture. You ready to absorb? Yes, sir. You're no doubt aware that for some time the Russians have been trafficking in drugs to our armed forces, both here and abroad. No, sir. Well, there have been. The Kremlin's been at it for some time. The Russians have little or no trouble in obtaining the drug. Their problem is one of channeling it. The obvious solution, therefore, is to channel the drug through some recognized center. One of these centers is the island of Ibiza in the Mediterranean. We traced one drug connection to a British-operated boarding house, the Royal Rose. Here, the trail ended. We sent a man to stay as a guest at the Royal Rose. His cover name was George Trent. Two weeks ago, he disappeared. Your job's to find out what happened. And the drug connection? If you have any illusion about scoring a starry-eyed victory by smashing a Soviet drug ring, forget it. Your job is to find George Trent. Nothing more, nothing less. The name of the operation is Cornfield. Be ready to leave for Ibiza in the morning. Yes, sir. May I tell you, sir, how deeply I appreciate the opportunity you are giving me to prove to you what I can do. Thank you. Porter? Yes, sir. You've forgotten your gun. Do you know what I'm going to do with this gun, sir? I'm going to go back onto that firing range, and I am going to qualify. Be careful with that thing. Oh, it's all right, sir. It's not loaded. <laughs> You must 
Parker. Yes, I am. How do you do? How do you do? Welcome to Ibiza. Thank you. In case you haven't already guessed, Mr. Barker, the Royal Rose is within walking distance. Very central, as the guidebooks say. My name's Arnold, by the way. Mona. Mona Smith. How did you come to hear about the Royal Rose? A friend. He stayed here last spring. I wasn't here then. I've only owned the Rose for six months now. Well, you're the owner. Manager, chief cook and bottle washer. We have seven rooms and a staff of one. It's her day off. That makes me official greeter as well. My husband and I used to operate a tea shop in a Welsh border village. My husband? He was killed in a train accident two years ago. When the insurance was finally settled, I came out here on holiday. Ended up buying the Royal Rose. Are you married, Arnold? Am I married? No, I'm not married. Oh! Oh! Yes. He was coming straight at you. It almost looked deliberate. Deliberate? <laughs> Would want to run me down. I must say you're pretty calm about it. I'd be shattered. I'm uh, not nearly as calm as I appear to be. That's very honest of you. I like that in a man. Come on. The Royal Rose is just around the corner. Take you straight to your room. You can check in later after you freshen up. Dope. I beg your pardon. Don't mind Perky. He calls everyone dope. Thinks he owns the place. Now just make yourself at home. Tea will be served in the patio at four. Give you a chance to meet the other guests. And Arnold, if there's anything you need, anything at all, just let me know. You're very kind. This report is in scramble mode seven. Operation Cornfield arrived to beat the on schedule. Met at the dock by the owner-operator of the Royal Rose Hotel. One Mona Smith. Nearly run down by a black four-door Fiat, which is the Spanish Fiat. Doubt foul play intended. A parrot named Perky yelled dope when I walked into the Royal Rose Hotel. However, I feel it was not drug-related, inasmuch as he apparently calls everybody dope. Assuming for a moment that the black Fiat actually was trying to run me down, 
it is possible that Trent was disposed of by the old hit and run scenario. However, I find it impossible to believe that the speeding see it was actually an attempt on my life. I have been in Ibiza less than an hour and have no reason to believe that my cover is broken or that my life is in any danger whatsoever. lost your way in this great big mansion of a place, have you? No, no. I, I wonder if you could tell me, what does one do with a scorpion in one's room? Oh, ask me tomorrow. It's midday off today. Ta-ra. was put together by an expert from the West. Polish, from Warsaw. The case is real leather. A speeding car that does not hit. A gun with halves that do not fit. A scorpion that forgets to bite. It is your brain that has two wrong halves. I do not have patience to listen to these idiotic excuses. Your orders are clear that man has to go. Hit him over the head, throw him off a mountain, do whatever you want. Your job is to get rid of him, right? So get rid of him. Clear? Arkwright. A bit of a tyrant. But she does have some good points. One, she's got pots of money. Of course, she never spends uh, any. Awful old bag. Stay out of her clutches, she'll pour you into your grave. Arnold Barker, this is Mr. Lewis. He's an American. Arnold, call me Harry. How do you do, Harry? More tea, Harry. You don't mind if I do. Don't mind at all. Who's that gentleman behind the paper? That's Jason Locke. He's a dentist from London, retired. Did you uh, hear about the guy that couldn't get into the dental college? No. Didn't have any pull. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, wh where do you come from, Harry? In the States, I mean. Trenton. Trenton? Ohio? 
Have you been here long? Six weeks. You must be a little homesick. No, no. I lived in England for three years during the war. Sergeant Harry Lewis, tail gunner. 35 missions and not a scratch. I say, would you stop those horrid war stories? Pass me the milk. Oh, smoke bag. Oh, uh, I, uh, I don't think I caught your name. Barker. Arnold Barker. Alicia Arkwright. You're a good-looking man, Mr. Barker. And you're a good-looking woman, Mrs. Arkwright. Well, well I used to be a good-looking woman. A knockout, as a matter of fact. That was a long time ago. Nonsense. Alicia, did I ever tell you I'm from Trenton, Ohio? I have been living at the Royal Rose for 20 years. I've seen no less than 14 owners come and go. They always fail. Uh, retailing, is that what you do? No, animal husbandry. I'm an overseer to government-controlled experimental farm. From where, Mr. Barker? I have a cottage in um, Nether Weald. More milk? Yes. Ah! What the hell was that? A flower pot fell off the balcony. It's done that before, you know. God, Arnold, that could have knocked your brains out. <laughs> Lived here 20 years. Seen that happen five times. Nobody's been actually hit, though. This, I think, is the closest call of all. I'm so sorry. Oh, no, nonsense. No, accidents happen all the time. I think I'll go out for a little stroll. Again, how can you miss a large head like that from a height of two meters? And in full daylight. No, you idiot. He did not get up from the chair too early. You dropped the floor pot too late. Suspicious of whom? The American? Oh, or oh, that other one, the Englishman. Good. Very good. Let him be suspicious. Throw him off. Throw them both off. Arrange it so they meet. Uh, uh, somewhere in the village, maybe, no? Let them have a talk. What do I care how you do it? Just do it. It is your job, is it not? Slip a note under a door. Slip a note under two doors. Use the good half of your brain. A romantic scene, Mr. Barker? It is indeed, Mr. Locke. I'm not surprised you decided to spend your retirement years here. I, I haven't. Not fully. I shall have to see if the winter is as damp and chilling as the locals claim. <laughs> How do you pass your days, Mr. Locke? I, um, watch the world around me. I study people. <laughs> I am, if I may say so, rather perceptive. I try to probe beyond the facade. For instance, I have the feeling that there's more to your presence in the Royal Rose than meets the eye. What perceptions do you have of the other guests at the Royal Rose, Mrs. Arkwright, Mr. Lewis? Mr. Lewis. Ah, our American tail gunner. Or hmm? well, so he says. You think he's not what he claims to be? No. More by perception than hard proof. But uh, little pointers along the way have convinced me that our friend Harry is, in fact, a member of the CIA. Well, he has all the qualifications. He doesn't understand a single word of the language. He's absolutely no idea of the political situation in the area. Uh, and even if he had, he wouldn't know what side he was supposed to be on. I also have reason to believe that he's involved in some clandestine operation on the islands here. Well, you heard him yourself. He pointedly repeated the name of his hometown, Trenton. Remember? Trenton. 
Vaguely, yes. Uh, I'm not sure I see what you're driving at. Several weeks ago, we had a guest at the Royal Rose. British, it seemed, a bookseller, he said. A tourist, he claimed. That man and Harry Lewis were very friendly. Uh, I'm still not with you. About three weeks ago, that man did a moonlight flit. He was here one minute, gone the next. His name, Mr. Barker, was George Trent. Now, do you see? Uh, I see the connection between Trent and Trenton, if that's what you mean. I think he was testing you. You know, the sort of thing like spies exchanging secret passwords to identify themselves. Have you ever been involved with espionage, Mr. Locke? Oh, no, not at all. I must be so excited. Harry Lewis with the CIA. What could he possibly want with me? What could he possibly think I am? Well, I've no idea. As, as I said, I'm merely an observer. We'll talk again, I hope. I want to hear more about this mysterious George Trenton. Trent. Trent. Thank you. Good night to you, Mr. Long. Good night, Mr. Barker. exception of the scorpion, which in all probability was a deliberate attempt on my life. The other incidents, that is the potted plant and the black fiat, could very well have been planned near misses, designed to warn me or frighten me away. As for Jason Locke, at first I thought him to be just a harmless old bachelor. But then, why did he mention George Trent's disappearance. And why was he following me? It would appear our Mr. Locke would bear some watching. Follow that button.
sure he followed you? Positive. He made a really professional job of it, my man. I just can't believe he's a British agent. Why not? Well, for one thing, he's such a bloody fool. Oh, I don't know about that. I had quite a nice chat with him last evening. <laughs> Very charming fellow. Oh, I'm not talking about charming. I'm talking about murder. They've already tried three times to kill him. Three? You don't think that flower pot was an accident, do you? But you said it had happened before. I didn't want him to get suspicious. Do you think anyone's told him about the sandstone quarry? Well, I certainly hope not. No. I trust it's all right. Splendid. Uh, where's Mona? Oh, she'll be along. Milk or lemon? She checked in last night. She's an entertainer. Ole! Ole! Bravo! Ole! Oh, thank you. I am Maria Sola. Arnold Barker. You must be North American. You are so 
Very tall. Tallish. Maria, I've been looking for you all morning. Why don't you join me in the bar for a spot of brandy? At this hour? How disgusting. All right. See you around, Arnold. Looks like somebody stole your thunder, Arnold. She's very pretty, isn't she? I hadn't really noticed. Martha said you wanted to see me about something. I did? Try to remember. I'll be right back. Ah, oh, Mr. Locke. Oh, good morning, Mr. Barker. I wanted to thank you for showing me the way to that wonderful beach yesterday. I have no idea what you're talking about. Doesn't matter. What does matter is that I've been giving your Mr. George Trent a lot of thought. I checked the register to find his whereabouts in Britain. And guess what? I can't possibly. The page that would have had his name has been torn out. Oh, that's most curious. Possibly a mistake on somebody's part. The plot thickens. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Locke? Perhaps. Perhaps I'm being melodramatic. Would you care for some tea, Mr. Locke? No, thank you, no. <clears throat> I have to be on my way. What's the matter with Mr. Locke? I have no idea. Did you remember what you wanted to see me about? Yes, the sandstone quarry. Is it worth seeing? It's hardly a tourist attraction. Quite an eerie place, actually. I never did see what he found so interesting in it. He? George Trent. He was a guest who stayed here and ran off without paying his bill. He said he went there a lot. Well, then it must be worth looking at. Where is it? It's on the outskirts of town. One day I'll play guide and take you there. Why not today? All right. They used to use the sandstone for building blocks. The quarry gave out 20 years ago. It's not a very cheerful place. Depends on who you're with. I forgot my camera. I'll be right back. Cheese. Cheese. Back up a bit. A bit more. Fuck 
American brake on the Citroën de Chevaux is one of the strongest in the motoring world. It has to be, you see, to compensate for the fact that the gears are so light. As a matter of fact, the gears on the de Chevaux are so weak that the car cannot be started with motion. That is a tow wire push. Interesting. Okay. Now you lean forward towards me slowly. I'm going to open the door. We're going to jump. Move this way and don't let go of your nose. Easy. Easy does it. Okay. No. I don't believe my ears. The car went over a cliff, exploded, and he get back to the hotel on his own two feet. We are witnessing a resurrection here, another Lazarus. All right, all right, I believe you. Now listen to me carefully. Because of my very good nature, I'm giving you another 24 hours to dispose of him. Now this is your last chance, you understand? And if we are about to witness another resurrection, it will be one that you will have to perform on yourself. Romantic spot, isn't it? Yes, it is. You um, wanted to see me. I heard Mrs. Arkwright and Jason Locke talking. They said you were a British agent. They did? I need an agent. You do? For my act. Oh. Flamenco, flamenco, I'm sick of flamenco. I'm ready for bigger things. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sure you are. I, I, I wish I was an agent, but I'm not. Oh. Oh, well. It's still a romantic spot. Yes, yes, it is. Is it like the spot Mona took you to? Oh, no, no. No, it, it was more like a gravel pit. But you must have kissed her. Like this? What's wrong? No one's coming. A couple. In search of solitude. You see? A couple. Hammers.
liked me. I'll get out here. I would rather walk than ride with a madman. Good night. Operation Cornfield. Drive. Kill the lights. Or the chopper. Good evening, Porter. Good evening, sir. Well, get in. Yes, sir. I hope you haven't forgotten how to fly one of these things. Light aircraft operation being part of your basic training. Yes, sir. I can fly it. Good. Going backwards. Yes, sir, I know. <sighs> there we are. Oh. It just takes a while to get the field. <laughs> well, now, just circle the field and give me a report on the progress of your mission. Um, well, well there, there, there hasn't been any progress. Not yet. I, I've only been here two days. I'm perfectly aware how long you've been here. What I want to know is if anything's happened. Yes, sir. Uh, but, but nothing leading anywhere. Not, at least not as far as I can see. <sighs> well, tell me. Give me all the bits and pieces. Well, there's Jason Locke. He's a retired dentist from London. Uh, he seems pretty suspicious. But then again, they all do. Has there been any mention of George Trent? Yes, they talk about him all the time. There are some who think that he skipped off in the night without paying his bill. And the others think that foul play was involved. Foul play? Yes, but something about the sandstone quarry. I nearly fell in myself. Fell in? Yeah, just before my car went over the cliff. Am I to understand there have been attempts on your life? Five, including the flower pot. But in all honesty, I think only the scorpion in my bed and the two Russians trying to run me down tonight were the only definite thrusts in my direction. You better take this. Not exactly a cannon, but it has slight recoil. An 800-pound impact at 20 feet. Uh, thank you, sir. Do I have to sign for it? No. Are there any further instructions? Yes. Stay alive. Good morning. Hello. Not so far it hasn't been. Oh. Mona was out late last night. Decided to sleep in. Leaves all the work to me. Slave driver, that's what she is. One can always quit. You can't. Beg your pardon? Look, Arnold, I, I know it's none of my business what you're up to, and maybe you're not up to anything, but I think I ought to tell you. Tell me what? I know what you really are. Your job. <coughs> my job? Mm, when I was taking clean towels to your room yesterday, I, I found this on the floor. 
We must have dropped it. Don't worry. I won't say anything to others. I'll get you breakfast, Inspector. Good grief, Scotland Yard. Oh, there you are. Guess what happened? Old Jason Locke took off last night. Didn't say goodbye or go to hell. Probably left the bill they usually do when they sneak off. Mr. Locke did not sneak off. His bill was paid and he left his key. He checked out? Not exactly. But he's a grown man. He can come and go as he likes. He likes Ibiza. He was planning to spend his retirement years here. Apparently he changed his mind. Or somebody changed it for him. Mr. Locke did not check out of this establishment. His suitcases are up in the attic.
there is a disagreement as to who was the last to see Mr. Locke. I believe I was. That would have been about four o'clock. Four o'clock. And was he acting uh, strange in any way? As a matter of fact, he was. That's why I feel sure something is wrong. Mr. Locke was upset, which is completely out of character. Hmm. Did you and he uh, talk, Mrs. Arkwright? Briefly. He said he had somewhere to go. I told him not to forget our chess game. And he said he would not be playing that evening. A statement that could fit with a person who was about to slip away covertly. He didn't slip away. No, I saw him um, after 4 o'clock. Must have been around 6. 6 o'clock. And uh, was he upset, Mr. Lewis? Not a bit. I was in the bar, I saw him cross the lobby. Seemed fine to me. A man who spends half his life behind bars rarely knows what time it is. Behind bars? You have been in prison, Mr. Lewis? No, 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 no. Uh, she means that I drink a lot. I see. Who have we here? Uh, Mr. Barker. Arnold Barker. Ah. Perhaps you would care to offer an opinion, Mr. Barker? An opinion? As to what happened to Mr. Locke? Oh, oh, I, I, uh, I have, I have really no idea. I've only been here a few days and I, I hardly knew the man. Sorry, I, uh, I can't help you. Oh, yes, you can. Go on, tell him, Arnold. Tell him who you really are. What? Oh, Mr. Barker's a detective. He's from Scotland. Yard. He's got a card to prove it. Don't see? <laughs> No, 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 no. It's, it's a mistake. A, a, a joke. I have nothing to do with Scotland Yard. But you have an identification card. I've seen it. No, no, it doesn't mean anything, that card. I mean, you can buy them in any London joke shop. They sell them to the tourists by the thousand. They, they take your picture and then they put it on right while you wait. Where is this card, Mr. Barker? I, 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 don't, I don't think I... Uh... Uh, yes, I, yes, I do. <laughs> I'm quite proud of it, actually. It looks... So official. I've, I've had a lot of fun with it. What I do is I, I leave it lying about and see the finder's reaction. That, that's how she saw it, isn't it, isn't it Martha? <clears throat> Impersonating an officer of the law. No, 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 nothing like that. No, fun. Plain fun. I think you had better come along to the police station, Mr. Barker. me for taking so long. Oh, perfectly all right. You do not, of course, have a criminal record. No, no, of course not. But, but you had to check. We also checked on Jason Locke, and I am happy to report we have found the missing gentleman. Oh, good. I'm delighted. He is at the Sacred Heart Clinic with a head wound. It would appear he fell into a sandstone pit. It is a common accident here for the tourists. How is it? How curious. If indeed it was an accident. Is Mr. Locke suggesting that he was attacked? Mr. Locke is unable to claim anything at the moment. He's still unconscious. When he comes to, possibly he can tell us how he landed in the pit and what kind of magic he used to get himself from the sandstone quarry to the clinic. But perhaps you have the answer to that question already. Uh, no. This is yours. Aren't they fun? The card, as you very well know, is genuine. You have been cleared by a Scotland Yard. Good day, Detective Inspector Barker. Good day, Captain. Thank you. They checked with London and found out I was telling the truth about the Scotland Yard card. Oh, I feel such a fool. It's my fault. I should have told you straight off it was a joke. Poor Mr. Locke. Getting hit over the head is no joke. 
And when he wakes up, somebody is going to be in a lot of trouble. Attempted murder. That's what I call that it. That is not our problem, OK? Oh. I could use a drink. I think we all oh, could. A drink? Yeah. Hey! No, come on. Everybody, let's get everybody get a bottle and really drink. Right. Come on, Come on. My glass is empty. Good grief. Well, come here, my dear, and I'll buy you another one. A toast to every injured person in the world. The injured, injured. The, 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 And the queen. The queen. Hey, did you hear the one about the guy who was at death's door and the doctor was trying to pull him through? Here. Let me tell you what happened to me at the police station, Mona. You already did. Twice. I did. Then I'm drunk. And I must be on my way. Hey, Arnold, did the police have any idea who may have smashed old Jason over the head? They did not. And they did not have any idea who took him from the sandstone pit to the clinic. Isn't that right, Maria? I wouldn't know. No, of course you wouldn't. How did you? How did I what? know what happened. Oh, the captain told me. But if Mr. Locke was unconscious when he arrived at the clinic and is still unconscious, how did they know he was brought from the quarry? Elementary, my dearest Watson. His shoes are covered with sandstone. That's not a little complicated to me. You always all just wait until Jason wakes up and ask him what the hell happened. First intelligent thing I ever heard you say, Harry Lewis. Thank you, ma'am. Well, now, if you'll excuse me, I'll go and water my geraniums. Good night, all. Good night, Good night. All. Good night. Good night. was shaking, and the doctor said, uh, do you drink a lot? And he said, no, I feel most of it. I'll wait for you right here.
Seca. Paita. Paita. Look, all I want to do is get out of that house. Don't ask me why. I just think that the answer to all my problems is in there. Do you understand? My name is Arnold. It isn't really, but that's not important. What's important is that I get into that house. This is my first mission, and I'm not doing very well. And I may never get another chance if I follow this up. Not ever. We're going to be friends, are we? Hmm? We're going to be friends? Huh? Oh, we're going to be good friends, aren't we? Yes. Well, I don't know your name. So I should give you a name. Bruce. Okay, Bruce. You want to come for a stroll with me, Bruce? Happy. Come on, let's go. Come on, please. Come on, come on. Good boy. What are you doing here? Are you all right? Yes, sir. Allow me to present Agent Eleven. Oh. Uh, I, I thought you were being held prisoner. And you wanted to save me? Oh, that was most considerate of you. I'm sure you could have found some other way of achieving your objective. But now that you're here, I may as well fill you in in what's been happening. Won't you sit down? Yes, sir. Now to the nub. George Trent. We didn't know who'd handled him, so we sent you to find out. That much you're aware of. Yes, sir. What you're not aware of, of course, is the real reason you were sent here. It's sometimes referred to in the trade as an invitation waltz. In other words, the best way to get a man to remove his mask is to take off one's own. So it was decided to let the villain know you were coming and why. Claire? In order to help the waltz on a little bit, we left a few gaps in your briefing. Why you were staying at the Royal Rose, for instance. You would have to rely on invention. Hopefully, your lies will be seen through. Hopefully? Yeah, you will be taken as a friend of George Trent's, investigating his disappearance, or alternatively, a policeman doing the same. So, an imitation identity card was placed in your room saying that you were from Scotland Yard. Imitation Scotland Yard cleared it as genuine. Well, they were doing us a favor. We've done them so many. So, what you were using was the white hunter scenario, the goat to catch the tiger. The goat is tied in a clearing surrounded by pits, and the tiger falls into one of those pits when he is attracted by the bleating of the goat. Exactly. You were the bait. It's just that so often the Tiger avoids the pits and kills the goat. That was a chance we had to take. Why? Very good question. Be answered in due course. Oh, T. You're probably curious about Jason Locke's involvement in all this. He's as harmless as old Mrs. Arkwright or that colonial fellow. What was his name? Uh, Harry Lewis. Quite so, yes. Two sugars, isn't it? Yes, please, Maria. I'll call you that if you don't mind. 
Maria Sola. I rather like the name, actually. As I was saying, Jason Locke came into it by chance. A note telling you to go to the stone quarry the night before last was placed under his door instead of yours. So he took a taxi, and when he got there, he was mistaken for one of your friends, bashed over the head, and left for dead. <laughs> The rest you know. Well, of course, what you don't know is that we made a telephone call late last night to the Royal Rose saying that Mr. Locke had recovered consciousness and wanted to tell you who'd attacked him. So the woman got you drunk. Woman? Locked you in the attic and set fire to the building. She was on her way to the clinic to deal with Mr. Locke when we apprehended her and took her into custody. Yes, the villain is a lady. <laughs> Bring her in, will you? Yes, sir. By the way, we in the service don't want the Russians to know that you are involved in this. So if you open your mouth during the next interview, you'll regret it for the rest of your life. Come along, come along. Get yourself in here. We haven't got all night. What is all this? Going to play it that way, are we? Sit down. You know who we are. Maybe you think we don't know who you are. I don't understand you. Not in the least. What? To show you what a sweet guy I am, I'll play it your way. I'll spill it out for you. We're businessmen. We operate all over Europe. Multinational corporation, you might call us, but we don't have no offices, we don't keep no books. You won't find us listed on the stock exchange. Now I'll do a bit more spelling for you. Just in case you've forgotten who you are, you're a Ruski. You work for Moscow, KGB. I don't know what you're talking about. Talking about acid, coke, horse. That's the lovely bit of stuff you people are running. That's why we're going to take over the operation. First, we have to know the name of the incoming connection. Once we know the supplier, he'll switch to us, money talks. If it doesn't, we use muscle. I think you're with me now. Not at all. Oh, oh, come on, lady. We know all about you. You gave yourself away from the start, didn't you? The car pushing Arnold a little bit too hard, so it missed him. Scorpion, the flower pot, and all the rest. That last bit, getting him drunk, locking him into the attic, setting fire to the building. Oh, oh, oh. Naughty. <laughs> I can still smell the petrol on you. I was filling up my lighter and I spoke fluid on myself. Of course you did. <laughs> Me, I'll believe anything. There's a man standing in the doorway who won't. George Trent. You hit him over the head in the sandstone quarry, the same as you did Jason Locke. Hello, Mona. That'll be all, George. Now we've got that settled, I don't think we need waste any more time. We can make you talk, you know. I tell you what I'm going to do, just to show you what a sweet guy I am. I'm going to let Arnold talk to you alone. Maybe he can make you see the light. If that doesn't work, too bad. No one can say I haven't tried. Like I said, I'm a very sweet guy. Well, why don't you just tell him? I can't. It wouldn't be right. Oh, I made such a mess of things. Well, we all make mistakes. I'm sorry, you know. Yes, I know. And I'm glad I failed. So am I. I, I do admit sometimes it was stupidity, like the car. I was the one who moved the log from the edge of the cliff. Then I forgot and got in with you. That wasn't very smart, I'm afraid. No. But like I said, mostly it was because my heart wasn't in it. This was my first field assignment, before they just used me as a career. The only reason they gave me this job is because all the good agents were busy. You see, I've never touched the top in anything. 
Neither have I. Complete dummy, you might say. Complete. I actually hate this work. I, w I wouldn't do anything to harm my country or the service. I just hate it. But they won't allow you to quit. And once I'm back behind the Iron Curtain, I'll never get out again. I'll be doomed to Moscow and cold feet for the rest of my life. You'll be coming back soon. I don't think I could stand torture. I'm not terribly brave. I suppose I'll tell him everything he wants to know. Even about the drug. The drug? The one when given to a secret agent makes them tell everything they know. The one you were sent here to find. I was sent to find? We were tipped by British intelligence that you were coming. That's why it was decided to do away with you. Son of a bitch. That's the code name of the agent who leaked the information. Angus Watkins. Can you fly a helicopter? Of course. Part of my basic training. Not so. Spies can do anything, including getting you out of here. No, I can't let you do it. If you help me, you'll be ruined. Let me worry about that, all right? Let's go. No! Look, remember me? I'm the guy you tried to kill five times. Then why? Because you'd do the same for me if it was the other way around, okay? He's a friend of mine. Ready to absorb? Ready. It's a 20 minute flight to Mallorca. Once you're there, take a boat and double back to the mainland. Go to a town called Benidorm on the Costa del Sol. It's not only paradise, it's the melting pot of every nationality in Europe. You can get lost there, take a new identity, start over again. They'll never find you. I've often thought about doing it myself. Helping me like this, how will you get away with it? Tell them you got me in a judo hold and took my gun away. Do you have a gun? Yeah, yeah, it's here. It's here. Uh, here it is. Careful, it's loaded. I don't like guns. Well, neither do I. Did anyone ever tell you you're a wonderful man up at the board? No. There you are. Do you think they'll follow us? I know they will. Hold on. Like I said, a complete dummy!
And in conclusion, I can only say Operation Cornfield was a complete failure. The only good thing is it will go down against Appleton Porter's record, not mine. As for Appleton, he was, as I hoped, the right man for the job. Only a dummy like Porter could have got that woman out of our hands and back to Moscow without her ever knowing what we were really after. For our part, we hired a guard dog, suitably useless so as not to scare off Porter. We took the ruthless line and threatened torture and also made sure that Porter knew where the helicopter was for the escape. Poor Porter. I'm afraid he took his failure rather badly. He asked for leave, which was granted. Though why on earth he would want to go to a place called Benidorm, God alone knows. And in conclusion, I am pleased to report that Operation Cornfield was a complete failure. We were correct in giving this assignment to the young female agent Mona Kuznetsova. It was established beforehand that she was properly vulnerable, properly inexperienced, and was basically incapable of killing a man, and an attractive Western man at that. Our agents on Ibiza were certain she would have soon defected anyway. As for the so-called backup team, it consisted of two rather sluggish men especially chosen for the purpose. They were given unmatching rifle parts and a faulty Spanish car, typical example of Western technology. As a result, the Englishman Porter managed to escape every time thereby denying the British the one thing they wanted most, a confrontation and a chance to learn the nature of the drug. In a way, I'm sorry for the Englishman Porter. He faces severe punishment for not allowing himself to be killed. Mona Kuznetsova is now somewhere in the West, no doubt fearing for her life. She is not aware of the fact that we do not intend to bother her in any way. Our organization is better off without her. This is Colonel Novikov. End of report.